I thought that nah, nah, you said. I'm all right. You, all right. Hey there, and welcome to Sports Center, along with Stuart Scott. I am Rich Eisen. Coming up on the show, is it Canerco or Canerco? Change. What does it look like? How does it sound? What does it say? Call Canerco butter, because he is on a roll. At a time when a lot of what we saw, what we heard, and what we watched on ESPN was the same, he wasn't. Looking like two here? Oh, not quite. No Off the way. wall. It's a double for Cal. His mom thought it was a homer. More than being in the right place at the right time, he was a new voice for a new time. And yo, let me tell you, his wasn't the only one tonight. Sports Center starts time time right about now. And as soon as we heard it, the rules, the boundaries, the industry changed. And we knew it. Booyah. That's it. In a word, that's what he brought to Sports Center. He brought his own attitude and energy and lexicon. Third inning, Derek Jeter in first. Booyah! Alex Rodriguez, second homer in two nights. And he owned that um, distinctive style of doing the show uh, the way he wanted to do it. He didn't push the envelope. I mean, he bulldozed the envelope. And the fact that he was willing to try something new. You know, you had white guys in their 30s all with catchphrases. Stewart certainly wasn't that. You know this kid is as cool as the other side of the pillow. Three run shot to left. When he started at ESPN, I was still in college and, and he was the guy that I stayed up to watch. Appointment television because of Stuart Scott. Watching him as a black man Hearing things that I talk about with my other friends who are black, who my white friends might not know, and feeling like, okay, I'm, I'm part of the conversation now, whereas before I wasn't, and that was really cool. Stuart Scott grew up in North Carolina and graduated from Chapel Hill, a proud Tar Heel with a deep determination. He began his career in television working for local stations in the South. All of the movie reviews are good in practically every newspaper and magazine article, and there are a lot of them mention the city of Durham. It's a Hollywood formula that's bound to spell success for the entire Bulls organization. Keeps us pure. This is he arrived in Bristol in 1993 for the launch of ESPN2. He was like a ball of fire walking in the door. I'd never met anybody like Stuart Scott. If you're Warren Moon, what are you doing at this hour? Watching Sports Night? We know, we know, but... Maybe you should be packing your bags and calling real estate agents in Minnesota. I think it was pretty obvious, you know, after doing Sports Night, that this guy was going to be a big player here, uh, that he came at it from a different angle. Uh, we certainly needed some more diversity on the air, uh, and he, he certainly brought that in many ways. Who's got the best left hook and right cross in sports? From the start, some embraced Stuart's style, and some didn't. Stewart was very clear about who he wanted to be on TV. And it wasn't always the easiest path. And there was initially resistance here, but he had a very strong conviction about who he wanted to be on TV, uh, the audience that he wanted to represent, and the voice that he was going to have. Cynthia Cooper invited Pookie and Ray Ray and them over put on some old earth, wind and fire in the eight track at a black party. Coop, you go girl. Coop. When we started doing sports centers together in 96, just hearing from a lot of people that, that his style was grading on them. And I know Stuart heard that, but he didn't care. I mean, not one time did he think for a single second that he should be anything but himself and true to himself nice and who he is. Nice Top five, booyah! Royce Clayton takes Juan Guzman out. Royce, slow your roll, kid. It's only his fifth homer of the year, but he rushed it and crushed it 423 feet. Can we really accept, you know, this guy with the with the the booyahs and this and the and the flair on Sports Center, this pristine journalism show? And obviously the answer is, of course we would. And he, his presence catapulted that show himself and ESPN to another stratosphere, really, with sports fans. 
the big 7'1", 330-pound brother who strides up court like this after bringing down the house. From his language to his look, his personality to his passion, Stewart connected with the audience and broadened it at the same time. He quickly became a fixture on SportsCenter while reaching beyond it, creating his own place in pop culture. Hey, welcome to Sports Center. I'm Stuart Scott, and alongside me is newcomer to the program, Chet Harper. Hey, hey, how you doing, Stuart? <laughs> All right. Hey, Chet's more excited than Dennis Rodman at a Clinique sale. <laughs> <laughs> Booyah! Got your partner. <laughs> I think there was a segment of the of the audience that was kind of unique to him that really hadn't been represented on TV. We hadn't really seen something like that. And he nailed it. And when you were with him out of the studio and you got to see the reaction, then you really understood how much it meant to people. Owens was fine one day. Stewart's role at the network expanded over the years. While maintaining his presence at SportsCenter, he served as a host for more programs, including Monday Night Countdown and events like the NBA Finals. He sat down with two presidents, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, and conducted one-on-one -on -one interviews with some of the biggest names in sports, including Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan. Last time we saw you on the court, 98, the pose, the shot. <laughs> it's been that what? long, huh? Once and for all, did you push off on Brian? <laughs> what did they call? <laughs> okay, then. whatever they call, I did. Three men, three baseball players, three friends. Stewart's path through work and life changed in November 2007. While covering a Monday night game between the Steelers and Dolphins, he was forced to have an emergency appendectomy, and doctors discovered a tumor. He underwent two surgeries and months of chemotherapy and believed he'd beaten it. Four years later, in 2011, the cancer returned. Stewart faced it again, and again it returned in January 2013. With each recurrence seemingly worse than the last, Stewart continued to fight. One of the things he said uh, during his illness is he doesn't know what stage he's at, one, two, three, four, and he doesn't want to know. He wants to live his life uh, like anybody else. He wants to experience, uh, you know, the joys, the ups, the downs, and so forth. Uh, he was determined, I think, not to let his illness define him. In the midst of continued chemotherapy treatments and medication regimens, Stewart took to the gym to treat his body and his spirit through mixed martial arts and cross-training workouts. Good. I like it. it was physical as well as symbolic his way of continuing the battle. Through it all, he kept to working, exhausted, but unyielding. You have to actually try and be that bad. That's horrid. Again, though, not as bad as Carl Lewis. At least Fiddy can sing. Fiddy's a rap mogul. Fiddy can rap. Carl Lewis threw that thing down There's and he street butchered. street cred now after that. Is that street cred or not? Well, you know, the brothers ain't playing baseball in the street, so he still got street cred. He just ain't got no baseball cred. You'd see him in commercials, and I'd look over, and he'd be doing one of these. He'd almost trying to catch a 30-second nap. And, you know, it just, just killed me to see him like that, because that wasn't the Stuart Scott that I know, that I worked with for so many years. And yet, when the red light came on, when he was on camera, the audience at home, I don't think, could tell what Stuart was dealing with. Home for Stewart held the greatest and most important purpose in his life and his fight, being a father to his two lovely daughters, Taylor and Sydney. Your dad loves you to death. All he could do is spend all his time bragging about you and how wonderful you are. And since I've got two daughters, I know how he feels. Coming. I wish you guys all the best. Coming, coming to see you real soon. Love you guys. He would always talk about him because they're his heart so much pride the, the loves is is beyond any parent would understand it but his was just so profound and so evident and so he was so willing to share it in, in ways that it might be embarrassing to his daughters you know but he didn't give them you know Sydney and Taylor he was going to be proud of them and he was going to talk about them and he did and um 
it just, it breaks my freaking heart in half, man. Those girls are the reason why he fought as long as he did. They are the reason why he lived his life before he got sick and definitely after he got sick. Instead of sending you home tomorrow, I get to go home with you tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yay, Spurs. On July 16th, 2014, after 21 years on the air, Stewart was in a different role, not anchor, but inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my profound honor to present the 2014 Jimmy V Perseverance Award to Stuart Scott. What few knew was that he'd been in the hospital for days just the week before, undergoing multiple surgeries. Determined to make the trip to Los Angeles for that night and that moment. I knew that the week plus leading up to that night of the ESPYs that he was in bad shape. And they weren't sure if he was going to be able to make the trip, have the strength to make the trip. Um, so I was scared. I was scared watching him walk up the steps because he was so thin and he didn't look like Stu anymore. Um, but then I reminded myself, hello, who are you talking about here? This is Stuart. And he's, he's not gonna let this moment get away. The speech was a signature. Raw and honest, powerful and indelible. When you die, that does not mean that you lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, and in the manner in which you live. I can't ever give up because I can't leave my daughters. My Lulus Angel is here, my 14-year-old. Sydney, come up here and give Dad a hug because I need one. I want to say thank you, ESPN. Thank you, ESPYs. Thank all of you. Have a great rest of your night and have a great rest of your life. He owned it, didn't he? He owned it, just like he owned every sports cast, every sports center show, every Monday Night Football show we did. He owned it. It was Stuart. It was perfect. There are many ways we leave our imprint on those around us, and if we're fortunate, our mark upon the world with a touch and a reach, a sound and a voice. Swoops with the steel. Swoops, there it is. All the bell at where the party at. Swoops, there it is. Stuart Scott's voice remains in more than a word or a phrase. It's a truth and a spirit. It's the sound of change and it will echo for a long time to come. Ken Griffey Jr. waiting, waiting. Booyah! It's hard to remember how revolutionary it was when Stewart brought a little of that hip hop attitude and style and flair to SportsCenter. And it seems uh, like nothing controversial now to say booyah or as cool as the other side of the pillow. But at the time, it was a little attitude that Sports Center hadn't really felt before. So he brought that and it changed everything. I don't think enough people appreciate what Stewart did when he did it. And I don't know if it's going to be one of those that will understand the impact of his style maybe five, ten years down the road. When you have kids who have watched, who want to get in this business and want to emulate him, he took a lot of chances, but he never wavered. So he was so committed to that style, that personality, that demeanor. He wanted to have an impact on the business, and he did. Yes, he had an impact on our business, but more importantly, my dear friend had an undeniable impact on those facing cancer, including myself. Thank you, Stu, for your bravery and stellar example. Thank you for being you, as cool as the other side of the pillow. <laughs>